So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and I've been using iPadOS 15.3 Beta 1 since it was released about two weeks ago now at this point. Apple did release it before the holiday break and they haven't done anything since then. So what I wanted to do was talk about battery life, talk about overall performance and talk about some new features that we did notice that were added that were not talked about in the original iPadOS 15.3 Beta 1 video. And the point of these videos is to let you guys know my experience with the beta program as it keeps going because so far 15.3 has been one of the most stable betas, especially beta 1s that we've seen to date. But without further ado, let's get into it, let's see exactly what we got going on and see if you guys do want to jump into the beta program, if it's smart to get into it. Let's go. So let's hop right into this video everybody. Let's take the iPad off the actual Magic Keyboard bring this down and now we're ready to go so the first thing we're going to talk about is actually the build number real quick i know that we always touch on it but i'd like to bring it up so you guys are aware that we are on the latest version of the beta program so we have 15.319 d50 26 lowercase g and as you guys know if you've been following the channel then you know that the closer we get from the g down to a and then finally getting rid of that little moniker right there that means we're getting closer and closer to that final rc and then the final public release to the entire public so 15.3 that's what we got going on. So one new feature that was added was actually inside of the Apple Maps. So look around and flyover were added to Australia. So now Australia as a main city and then Sydney as the main city, they actually have the ability to go in here, zoom in, get a good view of everything that's going on. You can even add the low detail in here to kind of change it up if you want to. So they added that functionality for Australia in general, which is always great to see. I think we're strictly done for Sydney because it is the major city in Australia. But overall, it's a nice little added feature into 15.3, which we like to see. And then one more thing that was actually fixed was with Spotlight Search. Apparently, Spotlight Search was being a little bit finicky for a lot of people. For me personally, Spotlight was working correctly, but people were saying that Spotlight Search was not working. Even if I typed in, let's say, privacy, it wouldn't take you to the settings section of privacy. It would just kind of like search for privacy in Safari. So that has been fixed, it looks like, with 15.3 Beta 1. So that should be good to go. Always happy when Apple fixes those much-needed bug fixes. But overall, 15.3 Beta 1 has got to be one of the most stable betas that we've seen so far because everything is very, very fluid. Everything works as advertised. Like, all the performance is still snappy. It's still there. You know, with multitasking, I can grab another Safari over here, move it over. Then I can grab a little YouTube one, put it in the middle if I want to. So everything seems to be working very, very quickly. It works how it's supposed to be working. And there haven't been any performance hiccups whatsoever. So anything that... I was dealing with before with playback and LumaFusion and then also some keyboard shortcuts that weren't working for me. Everything seems to be working. So again, 15.3 beta one has been one of the most stable experiences when it comes to an actual beta program so far. Because normally with the first beta of a release, that's where Apple kind of has a little bit of leeway to play around with all the different features with the mindset that it still could not be working perfectly. So keep that in mind with that with 15.3 beta one, it is very, very stable. So if you guys do want to jump on it, I do recommend jumping on it, especially if you have a secondary device that you have there just to throw around. And then lastly, let's talk about actual battery life. So let's go back into settings. Let's see exactly what you got going on from a battery life perspective. Now the iPad hasn't been getting too, too much use over the last two weeks. So keep that in mind when we're looking at the battery life. But overall, we're looking at the last 24 hours, we're getting about two hours and 22 minutes of screen on time, another two hours and 12 minutes of screen off time, LumaFusion in here, 43 minutes, we're looking at about 1% per minute with LumaFusion, which is not ideal, not ideal at all. But if we go to the last 10 days, you can see we have an hour and eight minutes of screen on time, but I like to look at days like this, where we used a, a, probably about 60% battery, screen on time was almost three hours, screen off time was another three hours. But again, I would love to see what Apple considers screen off time. Like for instance, if I go into my display settings and turn off auto lock and make it for never, and then the display stays on that entire time, is that considered screen off time or is that still screen on time? That's what I really want to know when it comes to what variables Apple's looks at when it comes to screen off time. But you can see again, LumaFusion hour 17 took about 50% battery, which is not ideal. We got task aid here, 12 minutes, 10%. So that's okay. But again, we're dealing with about 1% per minute. Also task aid, if you guys haven't used that yet, it's kind of like Notion and Microsoft Teams put together, which I absolutely love. And then let's go to a day like Wednesday where we had, look at that, three hours and 26 minutes of screen on time, two and a half hours of screen off time. So that's about six hours in total, but we only took up about 25% battery with Affinity Photo taking that lump sum, about an hour and 35 minutes, took up about 62% of that time. Then we have LumaFusion again, 59 minutes, 17%. So overall, it seems like battery is improving, but again, we still need to get to that eight to 10 hours of battery life overall, because it's just not gonna cut it with the latest and greatest device only giving you about four to six hours of battery life, no matter what the situation is. 
Now, some people have said that the Find My feature, when it's turned on, that is what drains a lot of battery, but I don't see it in here, right? The Find My feature, background activity says only 1% of use, even though it's on all the time. But some people are saying that if you turn off the Find My feature, which is some, it's a pretty important feature, but some people are saying if you turn it off, that battery life will go right back to, right back to normal. But that is what we got from battery life standpoint. So overall performance, it's great, it's snappy, no changes when it comes to performance. Like again, iPad OS 15.3 has been very, very stable. Performance from a battery life perspective seems to be getting a little bit better, but we still don't have universal control and 15.3 did not bring, did not really bring any tangible features. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal one. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't too many tangible changes, especially between 15.2 and 15.3. It looks like 15.3 is gonna be a massive bug fix and, and performance improvement type of update. There's a couple of little features here and there that you do notice, like the maps feature and like spotlight getting fixed and things like that. But overall, it looks like 15.3 isn't gonna bring any new tangible features. And we're still holding out on universal control. Like I'm curious to know what Apple's gonna do with it. Are they gonna wait until next year with iPadOS 16 to really finalize that? Or is it going to be a new software version of AirPower where they announced it, they talked about it, they hyped it up, but then eventually didn't actually do anything with it. But that's going to do it for this video. Like I mentioned, leave a comment down below. Are you guys on the beta program? If you guys are on the beta program, do you do it on a main device or do you have a secondary device that you do the beta program on? For example, I did get this iPhone SE, which I actually do have the beta program for iPhones on here. So leave a comment below if you guys want to get an iOS version of these beta updates as well and not just the iPad OS versions. But that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, everybody, peace. I'm out of here.